The most expensive real estate listing in US history hit the market back in July of 2018 for the insane price of $1 billion. It consisted of almost 160 acres sitting in arguably the most desirable zip code on the planet. We're about to land on the most expensive piece of dirt in America. The asking price there is a record one billion dollars it's 158 acres it has the best views in los angeles but after a few price cuts and a ton of drama this billion dollar lot in beverly hills ultimately ended up selling at bankruptcy auction for just a hundred thousand dollars about the same price as a tesla model s in today's episode we are going to dive into one of the most interesting stories in los angeles real estate history we'll talk about the backstory of the lot and how it ended up being marketed with a billion dollars price tag and last of course we'll talk about the final sale price and the outcome when this property ultimately went to bankruptcy auction so this property was famously nicknamed the mountain when they were marketing it for sale which was fitting because it sits at the highest point in the 90210 zip code located at 1652 tower grove drive this 158 acre lot is located literally at the top of a mountain north of Holmbly Hills and west of Franklin Canyon. There's no house up there right now, although the lot is pretty level and graded. The property is for sale just for the land value alone. At 158 acres, just to give some perspective here, this land is twice the size of Disneyland. The mountain property consists of 17 total parcels, which range from 2.5 acres up to 12.2 acres, and all parcels are zoned residential. Since you're at the top of the mountain here, there are steep grades away from the property in every direction, which means that if you own this land, your closest neighbor is a half a mile away. Beverly Hills is definitely one of the most ritzy and glamorous places in the world to live, but it has been pretty heavily developed developed out there over the course of the past couple of decades. This just means that there's not really all that much land left. If you look here online, there are only 22 total lots available for sale in Beverly Hills right now priced generally anywhere from a million dollars up to 30 million dollars. So we really have to consider this lack of land supply when we think about why the mountain was being marketed for a billion dollars because it did sit right here in the heart of Beverly Hills. For anybody who was considering buying this place for a billion dollars, of course there's plenty of positives like the views in every direction and the fact that you're only like 10 or 15 minutes away from places like the Beverly Hills Hotel and Rodeo Drive. But the downside is that with all of those winding roads down the mountain plus hitting LA traffic along Wilshire and the 405, it's going to take you like 30 minutes to get down to the beach. All right, getting into the history of how this assemblage of land came to be, we have to rewind back to the 1980s because that's about as far back as the records on this property go. The mountain was originally owned by the sister of the Shah of Iran. Her name was Princess Shams Pahlavi. Apparently Shams once planned to build a fancy $20 million palace on this land, which Seems fitting like a good use to me, but that never came to fruition and she ultimately sold the lot in 1987. The property was then bought by Merv Griffin, who was a popular TV host and media mogul, and Merv hired designer Waldo Fernandez to create a mansion here, which also never got built. Merv described the site in 1987 as the most amazing grading and slicing of the top of a mountain you've ever seen. His plans were that construction would take about two years and the home would stand on about 16 acres of the lot with of course 360 degree views. When describing his plans he said we'll have a helipad, a couple of lakes, and a Palladio style house. Just like those houses that you see outside of Venice but with variation because we're gonna need a lot of glass for the views. Even though Merv was one of the richest men in the world back in the 1980s, unfortunately he fell into some financial trouble so he was never able to move forward with his dream of developing this 158 acre lot. Merv sold the land in in 1997 for eight million dollars which was a record-setting sale at the time and this time the buyer was a guy named Mark Hughes who was the founder of Herbalife. While Mark Hughes had grand plans to develop this land just like Merv Griffin and just like the princess before him but sadly Mark passed away unexpectedly in 2000 just three years after he bought the mountain property. Before we move on to the last name in the chain of ownership on this property remember that Mark Hughes name with Herbalife 
life because even though he passed away, his name comes up again later in the story. In 2004, an investor from Atlanta named Chip Dickens bought the land from the Hughes estate after Mark passed. I couldn't find the final sale price from 2004, but what we do know is that Chip took out a loan of $45 million at that time in order to be able to do this deal. After Chip Dickens bought this Beverly Hills estate, it sat there basically collecting dust for about 15 years. By around 2016, Chip established an LLC with a business partner, Victor Naval, and he transferred ownership of the mountain into that LLC, but that's about all the activity that I could find. Fast forward to the summer of 2018, and this is when the marketing buzz began for the mountain, with Aaron Kerman listing the property for sale for a whopping $1 billion. They were calling it LA's finest undeveloped parcel. Aaron Kerman called it the crown jewel of Beverly Hills. And of course, part of the marketing was the history of ownership involving celebrities, moguls, and even royals. Reports said that the buyer could build up to 1.5 million square feet of real estate across the land with enough room for a soccer field, an amphitheater, a helipad, and a polo field. You can see from the Google views and marketing images that the property has been partially developed with a lot graded, pavers installed at the entry, some landscaping put in, and a gated entrance installed, but there still was not a single structure built here yet. A listing price of a billion dollars was a huge ask, and to be honest, it's still even a big ask to this day. The most expensive listing up until this point was Bruce Mikowski's monster mega mansion that he listed in Bel Air for $250 million, which at that time hadn't even been sold yet. I dug up an old marketing video from Aaron Kerman's YouTube page that showcases the lot from a bunch of different angles, and in his description, he says that the mountain of Beverly Hills is the pinnacle of opportunity in the United States. He says to speak of rarity would indicate that there are only a small few of what is being offered here, but this is even more rare with its 157 acres and 360 degree views. Now, some people might argue that slapping a billion dollar price tag on a property like this is kind of just a marketing gimmick. And with some of these LA mega mansions, I tend to agree with that thought process that realtors or developers just put massive price tags on these homes just to generate some buzz. But when you consider the fact that if someone were to pay a billion dollars for the mountain, that would amount to about $6 million per acre in the best part of Beverly Hills, it's not all that bad. Aaron Kerman stated back then that his marketing budget was between $400,000 and $1 million to sell this property. I cannot even imagine being a real estate agent and sinking a million dollars into marketing a property for sale. But when you realize the fact that Aaron Kerman's commission, if he did sell this place for a billion dollars, would be over $20 million, a million dollar marketing budget doesn't sound all that bad. In order to be able to afford the mountain, you obviously need to be a billionaire. There's around 2,800 recorded billionaires in the world right now, and there was about the same amount back when this place was being marketed for sale. So a relatively small buyer pool here, but as they say, when you're selling anything, all you need is one. Apparently the billion dollar price tag was too big for anyone on the planet because in February the price was slashed to $650 million. And at that point there was some chatter about some interest and offers coming in and even one rumor that the real estate developer Scott Gillen was going to pay $400 million for the lot none of that ever came to fruition. After all of that marketing and buzz trying to sell the mountain, there was something going on behind the scenes with the owners of this property. See, remember that buyer that we talked about earlier, Chip Dickens and his partner, Victor Naval? And remember that small $45 million loan that they took out back in 2004 to be able to afford this place? Well, that is where things get interesting. It turns out that the $45 million loan was actually from the Mark Hughes estate. That was the estate of the Herbalife founder who own the mountain prior to Chip Dickens. The estate back at the time said, sure Chip, we'll sell you the property and we'll also do a seller finance deal where we'll lend you $45 million towards the purchase. Well, from when Chip bought the land back in 2004 to when it was being marketed for a billion dollars in 2018, it turns out he wasn't making his loan payments to the Hughes estate and that debt ballooned from $45 million all the way up to $200 million. If we've learned anything from these people who own this luxury LA real estate end up to their ears in debt and then put themselves in a position where they can't afford it. It's that there's really only one way out and that is 
file for bankruptcy. Chip Dickens and his company did just that. They filed for bankruptcy, but the case was actually declined, probably because they were not in fact bankrupt. That meant that the lender, who happened to be the prior owner, the Hughes estate, needed to take the next logical step here, which was foreclose on the land. Real estate agent Aaron Kerman's marketing came to an end. The auction date was scheduled, and on August 20th, 2019, the mountain officially sold at Pomona Civic Center Plaza for just $100,000. You heard that right, and you read that right. The property that was just being marketed for a billion dollars sold at auction for $100,000. Of course, there's a catch here, guys, and the court documents revealed that. It turns out that whoever ended up being the buyer of this property at auction would also inherit that $200 million worth of debt owed to the Hughes estate. I guess nobody felt like the property was worth even $200 million, so the Hughes estate themselves ended up bidding $100,000 for the property at auction. They won the auction, and they took back the property that they owned 15 years ago. What happened since the auction date of this property back in 2019 is pretty vague, but there was one very confusing story from the summer of 2020 that said that the feds were moving to seize the mountain once listed for sale for a billion dollars. That article went went on to say that some of the funds used to buy the property were embezzled by former high-level officials in Kuwait's Ministry of Defense. And they say that ex-Kuwait officials used the London office to open unauthorized bank accounts, and then they transferred over $100 million in public funds to the London accounts, some of which were allegedly used to fund the purchase of the mountain property. Now, it needs to be said that these allegations do have nothing to do with the current owners of the property, the Hughes estate. They seem to all be pointed at the previous owner, Victor Naval. So my guess is that the feds can't go after the property itself. They'll probably be going after Victor. If you enjoyed the video and the story today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below for me before you go. The likes and the comments on these videos really help my channel out a lot. And remember to click subscribe as well if you're not already a subscriber because I'm putting new videos out just like this one every week. But that's all I've got for you this time. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see ya.